Hello, my name is Caio Desorzi. Today is the 1st of June. I speak from Brazil, straight from Sao Paulo. And I'll do this interview by Esquerda Marxista, Brazilian section of the international Marxist tendency, uh, with Erica Ruddle, who lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota, United States. And and uh, she is an activist with the U.S. section of the IMT, International Marxist Tendency, and a writer for Socialist Revolution magazine. Good morning, Erica. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you again. Uh, I thank you for your willingness to give us this interview. Uh, Erica, we have all seen the repercussions on social media of the protests that started there in Minneapolis and uh, that are now taking the entire United States against police violence and racism. Uh, the video of George Floyd being murdered by those policemen is disgusting, but George Floyd was not the first black man to be killed by racist U.S. police. Uh, the murder would be just one more to enter the statistics. Uh, we are well aware of this terrible reality also here in Brazil, when the police, uh, where the police kill black people and poor youth uh, on a daily basis. Why was this case different? Why did people revolt this time? The impression we have is that there was a previous accumulation and this murder was the last straw that made the glass overflow. What, what can you tell us about it? Uh, yes, so it is I think very obvious that the amount of anger in the streets could not just come from one event. This is the 49th police murder of a black man in 20 years in Minneapolis alone. It, in, it is not just direct murder from the police that black people have to worry about in Minneapolis. It is one of the most segregated cities in the country. There are high rates of poverty for black people and minorities in Minneapolis. And we can't forget while this is happening, unemployment is the highest it has been in Minnesota for 40 years. And black people are more than twice as likely die of COVID-19 in the United States. This was, as you say, the final straw. Sorry, uh, microphone, microphone problem. Uh, in Minneapolis, uh, street dem demonstrations began the day after George Floyd's assassination. Uh, at first, it seemed like a uh, protest like others, but what led to it becoming so blunt, burning down the police station where the murderers worked and set so many buildings and cars on fire in the city? I think it was this accumulation of anger that had built up and also the police repression and violence that provoked peace, the peaceful protesters into acting out. There is also suspicion towards the people who instigated these acts of violence that they are, uh, they may be outsiders or not part of the protest there is a mix of people that are genuinely angry and people that uh, want the police to repress the protest, who want to act, who want them to act violently against the protest and repress them. 
and it is not clear uh, who is who, but the this is clearly an anger against the whole system, and this includes the banks, the luxury loft that was built in this poor working class neighborhood uh, that was also burned down, that the people in the neighborhood could not afford to live in. And the burning down of the police station itself is retribution, revenge for the violence that has been uh, instigated against the protesters. Great. Um, the protests quickly spread across the United States. Uh, we saw police cars burning several cities across the country. From, from what uh, we could see, Donald Trump has been putting himself very badly, encouraging police forces to crack down on the protesters. Uh, is it possible to say that the movement um, that started as a protest movement against racism and police violence is expanding to become a movement against the Trump government and the establishment? I think that's right. I think the speed with which the protests spread all over the country speaks to this, how it connected to people in different cities all over the United States and around the world. Every city had not was not just protesting for justice for George Floyd, but for justice for the victims of police murder in their own cities, because every city has not just one, but many. And the direction this is taking against the government, not just against Trump, but also against the Democratic Party. Minnesota and Minneapolis uh, has been really a one party state. I mean, really the Republican and Democratic parties of the US are uh, like the two wings on the same bird. They are both capitalist parties but the state of Minnesota has had a Democrat governor, a Democratic mayor in Minneapolis, and the whole city council practically is also Democrats. And so this is not just against Trump, it is against both parties. We are seeing this, um, we are seeing the hypocrisy of the Democratic party which says it is the party of minorities, that it is the party of the working class. Uh, Minnesota has had Democrats in power for several decades, and these are the conditions that uh, poor black workers uh, have been living in for decades, and it is a product of the capitalist Democrat party as well. I understand, but I, I saw news uh, talking about uh, something yesterday that um, in, in Washington, demonstrations around the White House that led Trump to hide in the presidential bunker. Uh, you think this is, uh, this can uh, be a movement to overthrow the, the Trump government? I think this does have the potential to be an insurrectionary movement uh, with the right leadership that sees the ultimate end of overthrowing the system. It is, uh, unfortunately, we have not seen a leadership yet so much of these protests are spontaneous, but the real anger that people feel against the whole system, against Trump, uh, can be seen in the, the way that they have stormed 
the White House lawn, essentially, and the weakness of the state, the US government has been shown as well. And just think if uh, the unions were mobilizing all of their membership and the unorganized working class into the streets and into uh, militant, militant organizations, uh, the White House would be overrun by now and, and under control of the working class. Great. Uh, these uh, daily protests open up a new political situation in the United States. Apparently, apparently nothing will be as before. Uh, we saw the news from some policemen in Florida, I believe in, in Coral Gables, uh, who are supporting the protesters. Uh, is, is the news uh, of a similar act by policemen in other parts of the country, is it possible for police forces to be divided, split along class lines in, in the US? So we are not seeing quite that development yet, I would say. There have been cases where uh, black police officers in particular, like in New York, have come out with statements saying that they do not stand with the uh, policemen who murdered George Floyd. Uh, and you, there are there have been pictures of police officers taking a knee, such as uh, Colin Kaepernick's uh, method of protesting police brutality. However, these are action; these are just words, just symbolic actions, and we have not seen condemnation of the violence uh, with which the police are repressing the protests from these police. And so far, it could be uh, an attempt to build a bridge between the police and the people uh, to make it look like there is progress when nothing is changing. However, there is the potential at a certain point, even among the police officers, there is a racial divide in St. Louis, the officers, black officers and white police officers are actually represented in different unions, uh, segregated by race. And there's also a lot of police officers that come from a working class background as their families go into the streets, as their friends uh, go into the streets. If we expand this movement, enough and they realize they are shooting on their own families their own uh, friends that is uh there is potential then for a real divide among the officers and we should encourage that we should encourage them to not just support the protests in words and symbolic actions but in deed Okay. Uh, yesterday, I heard that a truck driver drove through a demonstration hitting some protesters there in Minneapolis. Can you tell us what happened? Yes. So, reaction has started to show itself in Minneapolis. So, last night, or Saturday night, there were rumors possibly spread by the police themselves that right-wing groups were planning to interrupt the protests with violence to encourage people to, to go home. And last night, of course, we saw this fuel truck run into peaceful protesters that were marching on a highway that the police had closed off somehow this they let this truck go through their own barriers a comrade of ours in the imt in minneapolis caught 
this on video. And after the truck drove through the crowd, the National Guard and police used mace on protesters that had not cleared the area. They did not attempt to stop the truck as it was driving through people. They did not shoot at the driver who was committing an act of terrorism. They did not respond by giving first aid to the wounded. That was all done by the protesters. The driver was apprehended and guarded by the police who did not even handcuff him like they handcuffed George Floyd before they killed him. They barely even pushed him into the police car. They treated him, a terrorist, more gently than they treated George Floyd, who was brutally killed for possibly a fake $20 bill. If they are attempting to calm the protesters down, they are not doing a good job. And this is why we need community defense committees. And this is what the union should be organizing right now. There are already the beginnings of neighborhood groups and patrols, and these must be expanded and immediately given a real structure so that we can effectively defend ourselves against the far right and the police and guard, which overlap in their membership. Yeah. I, I, I understand we, we saw something very similar yesterday here in Brazil, when the police protected uh, pro-Bolsonaro protesters uh, and repressed anti-fascist -fa protesters. Uh, I think it's the, the same method they use. Um, okay. Uh, finally, uh, last night I interviewed Serge Goulart on a live stream about uh, the Occupied Factories movement uh, here in Brazil and how the working class can take the means of production in their hands and put them to, to produce for the benefit of society. At the end uh, of this interview, uh, we talked about this insurrectionary situation in the US and wondered uh, if it would not be better instead of burning the buildings, occupying them, taking them, and placing them under the collective control of the protesters, under working class control. I would like to, to know what, what you think of this, uh, and if today there is an embryo or, of a popular assembly or something near this, uh, that looked like this, uh, among the demonstrations, that can take collective decisions and actions that go in this direction? Yes. So one interesting development that I've seen is that the Target store that was looted inside out has been now turned into a food bank that people have populated with donated food. And there is also uh, neighborhood committees just starting to form. The, what, this, what needs to happen is the unions need to give more structure to these uh, projects of mutual aid and neighborhood protection. Uh, they need, the unions also need to start preparing for a general strike. This is not the first time the National Guard has been called to Minneapolis to repress the, the citizens of Minneapolis. They were called in in Minneapolis in 1934 when the Teamsters Union was uh, striking and
and that expanded to a, a general strike encompassing the entire city and only under the full weight and power of the working class uh, was Minneapolis uh, completely changed from uh, you know an open shop city, meaning uh, not all workers in a workplace had to to join a union, uh, and it was considered a scabs paradise after the strike. Uh, thousands of more workers obtained union recognition and won uh, battles against the, the police after being brutally repressed. So in order to effectively uh, fight police brutality and ultimately to take power of the city into the hands of the majority of society, we need the we need to be preparing for a general strike. The unions must lead this effort and involve organized and unorganized workers. And these neighborhood committees and patrols that are defending small businesses from, from looting and uh, protecting people from police and right-wing violence, they need to be massively expanded and tied to the, the unions. Okay, uh, thank you very much again, Erica. Please pass on our solidarity to all the activists of this wonderful movement and to the Minneapolis IMT comrades. Your struggle is an example and inspires our struggle here in Brazil. Thanks a lot. Thank you.